Making sure you offer your e-learning on mobile devices gives you a competitive edge over other e-learning developers. One problem we all face when trying to create content that looks great on a computer and a mobile device is that images become too small to be really useful. In this example project, I'll show you how I took a 3D map of the HR office and turned it into a series of click to reveals. In this case, I was using this interaction for new employee orientation, but you can use the same approach to display detailed diagrams or photos on even the smallest screen. This project starts with the whole image. Learners can click on areas to enlarge that section. Then learners can click on those smaller sections and reveal details about which department sits in that location and what do they do. The best part is that it works from a desktop view right down to the smallest of smartphones. I use two ready-to-go slides from the Wired Quick Start project, so you don't need to be an expert in fluid boxes. I will show you how you can add a couple of extra fluid boxes to these existing slides and how to set the alignment to make it all work. The whole thing works with one easy-to-create shared action. I will show you how to write it, or you can simply use the one I make. You can either follow along during the tutorial or take the project file and modify it to suit your needs. All you need to do is add your images and it's ready to go. Also, I'll teach you how to use Photoshop to take your high resolution image and very precisely divide it up into smaller images. I'm excited by this project as I think it makes mobile learning far more useful for the learners in your organization. To build this project, let's start with a responsive design project. Click on the Assets window icon and navigate to the Quick Start Projects. We're going to use the Wired project, specifically Topic Introduction 1 and Overview 1, to create this. And the first thing we need to do is get rid of all the content that's on these fluid boxes in the first place. I'm going to swap these slides around because Overview 1 is going to become my home page and all additional pages will be based on the topic introduction slide. On slide number one, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide up this middle fluid box into three horizontal child level fluid boxes. I'm also going to ensure that the wrap options for that middle fluid box are set for squeeze in a row. I'm now going to add my title and instructions to the slide. We also want to make sure that the alignment of our three middle fluid boxes are set up appropriately. In this case, the left fluid box will need to be right aligned and the right fluid box will need to be left aligned. I've taken the original map of the HR office and divided it into three separate images. I'm now going to import those into these three fluid boxes. Make sure you set up each of these images to be used as a button. And on this slide, I'm going to actually duplicate this slide three additional times just so that I have some extras to work with. Returning to slide one, let's set the navigation for the first image to jump to slide number two. The middle image will jump to slide number three and the last image will jump to slide number four. That pretty much takes care of slide number one. Let's go to slide number two. I'm going to move the extra copy of slide number two to just below slide number two because I'll be using that for part of the left hand portion of this interaction. But let's go to slide number two and set up this slide. First thing we're going to need to do is divide this upper fluid box into a series of child fluid boxes. We're going to need a total of four fluid boxes to represent the different corners of that particular image. And like before, we need to make sure that alignment is appropriate. So in this case here, I'm going to select the upper left fluid box and make sure that it is right aligned and bottom aligned. Lower left will be right aligned and top aligned. The upper right will be left aligned and bottom aligned. And the bottom right will be left aligned and top aligned. Essentially, everything's going to center around this middle point right here. Next, we're going to divide up the bottom area, which is going to act as our navigation area. Divide this into three different fluid boxes. We want to make sure that the wrap options for this is squeeze in a row. 
And similarly, we're also going to want squeeze in a row for our fluid boxes above as well. So now we're ready to add some images. The upper left hand corner, I'll add the upper left hand corner of the left hand side of our office image. We'll do the same thing for the upper right, our bottom left, and our bottom right. Let's select our images and make sure use as button is selected. In the bottom middle fluid box, I'm going to add instructions. We're going to use some icons from the Captivate Assets window to create a home icon and a previous slide icon. And we're also going to check those to make sure that they're used as buttons as well. I'm going to resize the left and right fluid boxes at the bottom so the icons aren't so large. Clicking on the fluid box and going to the position panel makes this really easy. I'm going to select the home icon, click on the actions tab, and in this case jump to slide number one since that's going to be our home. And we're also going to select the hand cursor and disable the click sound. The back button in this case also will be jumping to slide number one and we'll also put the hand cursor on and disable the click sound. Let's move on to slide number three and set this up. In this case, the top portion fluid box doesn't need to be divided up into four sections. We're simply going to display one of those four corners. I'm going to bring in the first of those images now. Next, we'll set up the bottom fluid boxes to be similar to how they are on slide number two. We're going to have to set those actions again. So in this case, the on success action for the home icon will be jump to slide one because that's our home page. But the previous slide icon will not bring us to slide one. In this case here, we'll jump to slide number two. I've added a description in the bottom middle fluid box that will correspond with the image above. We're going to produce the different corners of the smaller image by creating multi-state objects. So let's start by creating a multi-state object for our image above. We'll click on state view. Now the normal state will function as our upper left image, but let's add the appropriate states for upper right, lower right, and lower left. So now that I have all of my multi-states within this object, I can change the images to correspond to each of the corners of the larger image. So in this case, the upper right will need to be replaced with another image. So I'm going to right click on the image itself and choose replace image. From there, I'm going to select import and select the appropriate image. We'll do the same for the lower right and the lower left. We can now exit the multi-state view and we're going to do something similar to the description because each corner of this section of the office will have a different description associated with this. So we're going to go into state view and I'm going to create the additional states. Normal will function as the upper left hand corner of that section, but we'll also make upper right, lower right and lower left. Okay, so now I have a unique description for each of the four corners of this section of the office. I can exit this state and an additional important step would be to label these objects so that you can easily find them later when you're writing your advanced actions. We'll call this description slide three and for the image, we'll call it image slide three. Now let's return to slide two. So let's select the upper left hand corner image and go to our actions tab. Here I'm also going to select the hand cursor and disable click sound, but we're going to execute advanced actions. Ultimately, we're going to create a shared action that can be used over and over again throughout this interaction, but you need to start with an advanced action first. Click on the advanced action icon and we'll give this advanced action a name. And the first thing that we need to do is to change the state of one of the objects on the following slide. So we'll change the state of the image to, in this case, normal, because that's the upper left. And we'll change the state of description also to normal. And then we'll jump to slide number three. Now I'm going to save this as an action so that I can refer back to it if I need to but I'm first going to save it as a shared action again so I can use it over and over again. 
When you save as a shared action, you just need to give a description to each of the parameters in your advanced action. So in this case here, we'll simply call this image, state of the image, description, state of the description, and the slide that we're going to navigate to. Click Save and click OK, and now we can close the advanced action window. Let's change our on success action for this image used as a button to execute shared action. Now it's going to select our select office section shared action, and we just need to populate it with the appropriate parameters. Let's click on the action parameters icon. So first of all, we need to let it know what image we're working with. So in this case, image three. We'll also let it know what description we're working with and of course the states for both of those, in this case normal. We also need to let it know what slide to navigate to and again that's slide number three. And we're going to repeat this process for each of the four corners and make sure that they're all set up to run the same shared action but with slightly different results. So here's the parameters for the upper right hand corner. You'll see I'm still selecting the same image and description for slide three, but we're choosing the upper right multi-state and the upper right multi-state for both the image and the description, and we're still going to slide three. Okay, so I finished applying my shared action to all four of these images, and I think we're pretty much good to go we need to just simply repeat the steps to create slide two and slide three for the middle section of the office and the right hand side section of the office but we should be able to test this out and see how it works for the left hand portion let's take a look okay so here's our home page and as you can see it resizes down and obviously that image is very small thankfully we have the ability to click on one of the areas and zoom into a closer image. But still, we could get a little closer, I think. So we'll click on, let's say, the bottom left-hand corner image. And you can see we get a nice close-up of that section of our illustration or our image. And we also have a description. This is where the HR finance team is located, including their director, Anton Abercrombie. So I think we're good to go. Again, you need to just simply replicate this uh, process for slide two and three for the remaining sections, and you should be good to go. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, hire me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that achieves your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.